Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, serve and volley. Alright guys, so with Wimbledon around the corner, my man Coach Rob with his continental everything grip, um, what more can I actually say or do to show you serve and volley? Because I believe that with your game, that's what we play, right? Serve and volley. Yep, for sure. So how did, how how and why does your grip, uh, how does it suit it so well? So being that it's mostly in the continental grip, more almost for all my shots, when you come in, you're already ready to volley. You're in the grip. Uh, you're there for overheads. You're going to serve with that grip. Um, you're, this grip is not meant to sit back and hit a gazillion ground strokes with it. So uh, you're looking to go forward. It's easy to chip the backhand and come in. Uh, way back in the day, you even used to chip your forehand and come in. Um, but those days have changed, obviously, as the game has changed. So, Right. So with Coach Rob's one grip everything, he's prepared to obviously serve, prepared to take that half volley and definitely prepared to do a volley after that so it's kind of serve mid-court volley or um half volley and then what do we do after that hopefully we're putting it away that's, and the point is over and you go back and do it again that's right we ain't gonna be there for 30 30 hit rallies you know we got to go three and out right there three maybe four and out set up ourselves for that kind of put away volley but let's talk about the progression of it right so my goal here is to put the toss a little bit in front of me because i want to be coming forward i want some momentum to help me go into the court so the toss is a little bit in the front where i'm leaning in hitting coming in i'm going to stutter make my split step find the ball decide if i have to half volley it or i'm going to short hop it or whether it's a ball I can move through and get a volley. Um, obviously, if I serve wide, I'm going to come in a little bit on the left side of the center line. If I serve down the tee, I'm probably going to come in more towards the tee uh, here on the deuce side. The add side, if I serve wide and the guy's got a good backhand cross court, I'll favor this side. If he hits up the line well, I'll probably favor it here, cover the line. If, he's, uh, if I serve down the tee, same thing, probably come right up towards the middle, uh, try to open space for the volley. If the guy is really fast, I may try to hit behind him with the volley um, because he probably won't be where he last was when he hit the return. But someone slower, then I may try to lead him with my volley. Right. Now, so we just finished the half volley or, you know, volley. added longer volley, volley, right? And then our next progression is continue in after that one. So you're setting up for essentially the kill, right? So you put it where maybe they're not, right? To open up the court a little bit, uh, to put it where they were, right? Right. So what does that look like? So once I have gotten that first half volley or volley back, I then square my feet again, a little ready hop, split step. So I'm ready to find where he's going. And then the next ball, I'm either trying to finish him off, um, short angle him, foot, finish him off, go deep behind him. Uh, if he throws up a lob, I'm, hopefully I haven't sold out too much where I'm really close, where I'm dead on the lob. But hopefully if I've hit a good enough first ball, I may get a short, weaker reply. Um, so that then that hopefully will be the end of it. Because if I'm hitting too many volleys up here, he's going to find a way to pass me or lob me. Right, so two main things that we need to do here that Coach Rob talked about is once you serve, right, you're going to track the ball and then split step to see where the ball will be coming. Once we realize where the ball is going to go, then we kind of go that way. And then we, we come in and we set up for that shot. I know a lot of you guys, you know, because I've seen you, you serve and then you ball, 
or you just can't you know, kind of keep going, right? And then you wind up kind of running through the volley, running through the volley, right? It's very important that like Coach Rob, we were balanced, right? And we're ready to take a volley on an offensive stroke, like an offensive stroke, like right? not like like that with the racket behind us and the ball is going to be back here. Okay. So split step, very, very important. So we split step, right? Then we go to the ball. We put the a half volley or volley and then we come up and we do the same thing, right? Because the volley is probably, it may not come right to you. So you're going to have to move to the ball and then put it away. Right? Well said. And then one other thing, going back to the beginning, is when you're back there serving, you're bouncing the ball, and you're kind of going through your head, how am I going to play this point? Mm -hmm. Right? What's the score? I've called it out. How do I picture the first two shots, maybe? Right. So if I know I'm serving and volleying, I'm serving it with the idea, I'm hitting it, I'm not waiting to see if it goes in, and then try to come in, because you see that a lot, where they get stuck behind, way back in no man's land, because they decide to serve and volley, oh wait, now the serve's in, and then they start to go. Right, right. You, you're already planning to go in, and so if it's out, okay, great, turn around, go back, do it again. Uh, so this is where planning comes into play. Your tennis IQ comes into play. I'm gonna go wide into that forehand, um, and then come in and hopefully put, put a half volley or a volley into the right side, so into the backhand side, and then hopefully finish you up back on the left side. So have a plan though when you do it and commit to the plan, right? So if you're gonna serve in volley, right? Think about what's gonna happen. You go wide to this side, it's gonna come back to you probably towards the center. You go that way and then you put it away that way. Go drop. Correct. Correct, and one way to really help you practice serving and coming in is when you are practicing your serve, put the basket in front of you. So if I had a hopper, I'd probably put the hopper about here. And so that when I'm serving, I take one ball, I'm gonna hit my serve coming in, okay? And now I get the next ball out of the basket. I come back, maybe I'll go to the other side. Go through my routine, same toss, boom, hit. Okay, get the next ball. If you leave the basket behind you, you're going to want to serve. And your first move is to go back to the basket, get the next ball. So that's how a traditional serve and volley should be played. Three shots. Okay, maybe a fourth, and that fourth one will probably be overhead, a put away volley, open court volley. Um, yeah. But we do not do this unprepared, and we don't do this without practicing it because it's going to be a disaster if you just de decide one day you want to do this right because you ain't going to know what you're doing okay so you have to practice the sequences and anticipate for what's going to happen you'll actually have to make what's going to happen yourself to make it happen if you get what i mean okay so you got to plan for it now coach rob why is serving volley kind of been abandoned? Um, probably several reasons. One is a lot of the court surfaces have slowed down. Um, the clay season's longer. The, uh, the hard court season, there's more grit in the paint. They're trying to extend rallies because at one point, if you go back, it was pretty boring. It was a serve, a volley, a, miss, a serve, a missed return. So there wasn't really any action. You just had guys crashing serves, crashing forehands, hitting rockets, and there was no really, there was no point development. There was no excitement. It was call me when the tiebreaker starts. And um, so I think as they slowed the game down, probably you know made the balls a little heavier, or fluffed them up a little more, whatever. Um, it it, it kind of went away from the advantage of really attacking. Plus with the string. You've got guys who can put a lot of topspin on balls and dipping them at guys' feet. So now he's up there hitting a, a weak ball and getting passed pretty easily. Um, so a lot of that heavy topspin is a lot harder to volley than just a flatter ball coming back at you. So 
probably a core, probably several factors of why it has um, gone, gone away a little bit. Yeah. So, but I'll, Coach Rob mentions a couple good things. Um, surface, the string. Let's not forget the racket. Uh, yeah, absolutely. All right, wooden racket, a lot slower game. These uh, graphite rackets, a lot faster game, a lot easier to get more power on it to pass people with. So unless you really practice that serve and volley technique, um, you're, you're not going to be comfortable up there, which not a lot of people are. So, but I feel like in doubles, um, you kind of have to do it, as you can see in the pro level doubles. Uh, most people or everybody serves and volleys. Want to thank my man, Coach Rob, for uh, showing us the way in the traditional way of serving and volleying. Uh, next, we're going to have Coach Andrew and Coach Chris um, show us their ways too. All right, we'll see you out there. All right, so we're on the court. I got my man, Coach Goo, got my man, Coach Chris, and we're gonna show you serve and volley with these guys, okay? All right, so Coach Goo, yes. what is your philosophy in serve and volley? Uh, my philosophy in serve and volley is when I need to have a change up, uh, let's say my opponent has been reading me, um, and just having a little change up, you know? It's like kind of like baseball where everyone throws a different pitch. Right? The pitcher always doesn't give a fastball every single time. Like you'll throw a curveball, a knuckleball. It's the same philosophy as that. It's just changing up the tone and the rhythm and help, hopefully giving you the advantage of that. So what I do most of the time if, if I do serve and volley is, one, I like to change up the pace. Two, also for me to gain more, a little more confidence in going in. So sometimes for me, I feel like I'm a little too passive once in a while. So having to serve and volley forces that aggressive nature out of me and wants me to come forward to finish off the point. Okay, so obviously, 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 <laughs> obviously, <laughs> we gotta wait for Ching here, okay, obviously. Obviously we make a mindful effort that we're gonna commit to the serve and volley, mm -hmm. right? We're gonna serve it in a particular position which will put us into a basically position to volley the the second or the third ball back, right? Because we're basically charging, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when I had Coach Rob yesterday, um, he basically, you know, continentaled everything, mm -hmm. and he, his philosophy was kind of like, um, I serve, I half volley, and then I put away the third ball. So the third ball comes back, and that's the put away. Now, do you have that same philosophy? Uh, in a way, Sometimes, um, for me, when I try to serve in volley, I try to think about where I'm placing my serve. Uh, for me, if I'm playing on the do side, I'm going wide, because if I do cut that wide and that serve is well hit, I'm just going to follow my ball in. So yes, I do crash that net. I follow my ball in, and then afterwards, I look at the right time to just hit to the open court. Or, uh, once in a while, let's say if I want to go T, and he's been covering wide, T, hits it back to me, I can go to an open court, open court, back to this corner, just to, you know, mix it up, change it up. So basically it's just, for me, what I use it for is it's kind of a more strategic strategy, just to kind of confuse my opponent. Right. Yeah. Just to make, show them that you yeah. can, I can do both. Can yeah. Do both. You can come in, um, hopefully get an easy point out of it too. And Coach Chris, do you serve a volley on tour? Yeah, uh, I think... I agree with Coach Drew. I would use it more as a strategy-based type of play. Tactically, I would look to use a serve and volley when I take a look at how my opponent returns. So if he likes to chip a lot, might, maybe it might be uh, advantageous if I come in after a serve. But I also think about where I, where I place it and where I can, I can anticipate he'll return it to as well. So it's also a good kind of variation to have 
instead of just going ground strokes, ground strokes, it could be good to mix in a few certain volleys here and there to throw off your opponent a bit. Okay, so I want to have Coach Goo show you a few um, just without the ball, okay? So his philosophy is a little different, though. He, he just mentioned to me that he actually crashes the net, which means he wants to get right up and put that second ball away, not the third ball. Therefore, I'll show you something different. Okay? So come on, Coach Goof. So how I start off, um, I'm going to start off thinking of where I'm going to plan a serve. Um, usually it's going to be wide or T, sometimes body. But I'm just going to think of preemptively, I'm going to think what target I'm going to hit on my serve and where I'm going to go. So I'm going to follow my ball. So what I do is I think about it, I go for my serve, I go, I toss. I hit, I come in, and I try to get as close as I can inside the service box. I actually don't want to stay too far behind because especially when you're playing singles, if you're stuck here, this is no man's land, you do not want to hit a half volley here unless if, you're, if you don't get there quick enough, you have to. But usually for me, I prefer to take it as a volley because I have more time to make my opponent basically move anywhere I want. Because if I take it as a volley, he has less time to recover. So therefore, I can place it to an open target or back down to this spot, to a deep corner, to a deep spot there, cover my shots and put out the point that way. Or I hit to an open court if it's high enough, and then I cover over to the other side by following my ball. So we gain time, we gain time from that kick serve because we're not blasting it down there we're kicking it there that's going to buy us two three four steps right since we're kicking it we're pretty much kind of coming right in right and we split step probably i would say minimum around the service service line to here yeah that around this area so we split step here and then we explode to where the ball is going to be which is pretty much gonna be, you go wide that way, it's gonna be here and you're probably going that way, right? Yeah, around so. there. I mean, it's just, all I do is like, I follow my ball. So like what I said is basically after I serve, if I go wide, I'm following my ball this way. So therefore, let's say if he hits it cross, I take one diagonal set to cut off, and I have an open court to go there. If he hits that down the line, I have one diagonal set to cross there, and then go back to down the line or to a corner. So basically, I'm just following my ball. I don't want to stand in like certain area. I just follow my ball in to cover for that ball. Got it. So, a couple things that Coach Koo is saying: follow the ball. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't get lost on the court after you do a kick serve, because if the person decides to miss hit or something, then that's going to be a winner. But most of the time, it's going to be predictable. It's gonna, if you go wide on that side, it's probably gonna come back on the center to that half of the court. So follow the ball. Kick it, you're gonna have time. Split step, follow the ball. Put the next ball away. Now, a recommendation for everybody out there, do it slow. Do it slow. Like go through the exercise of doing it. So kick it out, have your guy kinda just plop it back in the middle, and then practice doing it. Because if your opponent's going to blast it back to you, uh, you know, you're not going to get much out of it. Okay? So, Coach Q, any final thoughts on serve and volley? Uh, the biggest thing I would say is, yeah, have fun with it, like Harry said. Um, take it slow in the beginning. What I also recommend, as you can tell, after I landed, right, I actually exploded off. The very biggest reason why is, we want to have a first explosive step after when we land is basically to get off and get into the court a little quicker. Um, that's just one more tip just to give you guys. Um, if you feel like you're starting off a little slow, try to first work on the explosive first step after you land on the serve to get yourself a little more forward. But other than that, just have fun with it. It's a really fun, fun drill to do. Just start off slow and afterwards, you can try to pick up the speed and have fun from there. All right. So people do this very rarely, 
now. Okay. Yeah, it's a very it's a loss. It's a, it's a loss like art form now. Right. Like it's, back back in the seventies. Yeah. Um, like Taylor Dent, if you guys don't know, Taylor Dent is also an American player that serves in volleys. Uh, Pete Sampras. Uh, I mean, it's it's been a while. I haven't seen an actual true serving volley. Fed, Fed kind of does. Fed it did, it, yeah. Um, but like we're talking about, if we're talking about like back in the day, it was all Misha Zverev. Misha Zverev. So you know. I mean, now it's more in doubles. That's yeah. the biggest thing. It's more in doubles now. Serving volley is more in doubles, but it's good to have it in singles once in a while because it just, you know, throws off the rhythm. Right. So practice it. Have fun with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. want to thank my man, Coach Goo, for hanging out with me today and showing us the way on the serving volley. Where can we find you, Goo? You can find me at agu.tennis. So I'll also be posting content there as well. All right. Coach Chris, thanks for hanging out with us too. Where can we find you, Chris? You can find me at CB Chen Tennis. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Come on, don't miss the volley, Rob. Mm -hmm.